Hey guys, it's David and welcome back to Vintage Wine Life. We are keeping up with the 50 Glasses of Wine project and today we're going to talk about two Italian wines, Greco di Tufo and Lacrima Christi. And the overall theme today for our video is trying things we may not have heard of. So let's get to it. All right, so we have two wines on tap today, one white, one red. Uh, the white wine is Greco de Tufo, and the red wine is Lacrima Christi. And both of these wines are things that I had never heard of until I picked them up and decided to try to do a video on them, which is actually kind of fun for me. Uh, the Greco de Tufo was an internet buy, so I got it on uh, from a website called WineX, which used to be a place that I bought a lot of wine from. And uh, they, WineX is still around, but the original WineX or the WineX that I knew uh, was sold to some folks who were connected with the business, but the, the same owners aren't, aren't there and I really haven't bought from them since. Um, but in the old website, what was really cool, and I wish I'd see wine, uh, wine places do this more, is that you, know, you can look by varietal. On their, uh, on their website. And so I used to go in there and look on their varietal tabs for grape types I'd never heard of, just to try them. And that's how I got introduced to Honda Rabi Zuri. That's how I, I found Caeno. And that's also why I found this Greco de Tufo. And it's kind of fun, right? You, you know, you, you can buy a bunch of wines you've heard of or even labels you've had before, but kind of the fun of it is trying new things. So this was great to, to pick up something that I'd never heard of and, and just see what it's all about and not really know much about it. Uh, the Lacrima Christi, on the other hand, uh, this was a local buy. So this really cute Italian market went into town where I live. And on the shelf, of course, they, had the, they have a small wine section. Uh, it's all Italian, of course, uh, given that it's an Italian market. And I saw this, and I saw the producer's name. So this is Foide di San Gregorio. And I've had wines from them in the past and think they're, they're an outstanding producer. So I said, like, on principle alone, I've got to buy this, even though I had no idea um, what the wine was, and I had to do a little research on it, which, you know, for me turned out to be kind of an interesting wine, and uh, we'll talk about it in a sec. So um, we'll start with the white wine, though, the Greco de Tufo. Um, you know, I used to be a guy who just never drank white wine, um, really ever. And, you know, that changed when I, I took some wine classes and got exposed to different white wines. I, I think up until that point in time, I didn't know much about white wine and hadn't tried too many and didn't really enjoy it as much as I enjoy the red wine, so I just stayed away from it. And then, of course, I took some classes, and then all of a sudden you're drinking, uh, you know, Chablis, and you're trying uh, white Burgundies, and then you're trying white wines from all around the globe. You're trying, you know, South African Chenin, and, and you know, uh, wines from the Loire, and then you're trying, you know, just anyway, I can go on and on. Obviously, we can, you can do like a, a laundry list of white wines in the world. I won't do that for you because you don't want to waste your time. But it was just interesting to try different white wines and really get exposed to them and enjoy them. And so it's been kind of fun to pick up some white wines and, and, and uh, give them a whirl. This one uh, is, is, you know, the cool thing is it's ancient. So the, the name Greco de Tufo really is two parts. Greco is meaning you know, it's Greek. So that's actually the origin of the wine. I think it's from like Thessaly and I believe it was brought over into Italy. And then the de Tufo is actually like the name of the soil. So it's growing on volcanic soil. And so that's the, uh, that's the fun part of this is this is an ancient wine, um, something that's been around for a very long time, grape varietal that's been around for a long time, uh, and it's just something you don't really see much about. And it was just really fun to have something like that, something that had a, this sense of history in it, that you're trying something that's you know, been around in effect forever as they've been making wine. What I thought was interesting about it was it was a pretty full-bodied wine. Uh, a lot of white wines are light to the touch. You, you, um, you know, you think about like a Pinot Grigio or, you know, something else. You know, these wines are relatively light in, in structure and they don't have as full of a body. This, this wine I thought was much rounder, much fuller. So if you like Chardonnay or you enjoy a fuller um, white wine, maybe this is something interesting to branch out into. What I thought was interesting, I, you know, I read the reviews of the wine, of course, as I was um, going through the, uh, the research on it. And you know, everyone, uh, now granted, I feel like it's cliche, right? Every white wine in the world is lemon and then potentially almond and some mineral is, is you know, what you get so much out of, out of well, every white wine with the exception of, um, you know, Sauvignon Blanc from, uh, from New Zealand that, that has, doesn't really, as a like grapefruit and strong grapefruit at that. But anyway, I digress. Um, but I, I didn't get that at all. I, I thought this wine was kind of floral, like it almost had like a, like you were tasting, you know, uh, flowers and then tastes like oranges to me, bitter orange, which... It's really interesting. I think you'd never really get orange as a, a flavor in a white wine, except for maybe Falangino, which is another really awesome white wine from Italy, which we'll talk about at some point in time as we keep these going. 
But I just thought it was a nice change of pace. It's like a little bit of a curveball, like a fuller bodied white wine and kind of had this like orangey, florally kind of taste to it. So, uh, but again, I think the fun in it was trying something new. So uh, I'm glad I did and I'm glad I can share a little bit with you. I don't know if you're gonna be able to find it where you are. If you do see Greco de Tufo though, at least you'll now know a little bit about it and then up to you whether or not you wanna you know, take a plunge and give it a shot. All right, so the, uh, the red wine, Lacrima Christi, has a little bit of a different story. Uh, it's from relatively the same region. So both wines are, are from Campania in Italy. Uh, I probably should have said that in the first place about uh, the white wine, but hey, uh, you know, we're doing this off the cuff, so sometimes the order gets, uh, gets messed up a little bit. But uh, anyway, so Italian geography, the Campania region, southern part of the country and on the western side. Um, and the, uh, the white, so Greco de Tufo is actually from uh, Avellino, which is due east of Naples, if that helps zero in. Lacrima Christi is from a little farther north, uh, actually from Mount Vesuvius. And the name Lacrima Christi, directly translated, is Tears of Christ. And as the legend goes about this particular wine, Christ shed his tears on the mountain, and that caused the vines to grow with lots of vigor and uh, allowed you to make really good wine uh, from those vines. So the wine itself is comprised of two different grapes, uh, as opposed to Greco de Tufo's one grape. Uh, this Lacrima Christi is two grapes. Uh, by law, one of the grapes in there has to be at least half of the blend. And uh, what you have in here is Pieti Rosso and Alianico. Uh, Alianico is uh, a grape variety that we will get to as well at some point in time. I have had some really wonderful uh, Alianicos, uh, big, deep, dark, brooding wines. Um, actually, interesting, the same producer, Fodi uh, di San Gregorio, makes uh, this uh, wine called the Serpico, which is an Alianico that I um, really enjoy. And uh, I guess we'll, hopefully we'll taste that at some point in time and talk a bit more about it. But that's half the mix here. The other half is Pieti Rosso. And that's really, that's the, the grape that by law has to be at least half of this wine in order to be Lacrima Christi. And Pieti Rosso is an ancient, ancient grape. And in fact, Pieti Rosso is the closest you can get to drinking wine like the ancient Romans drank wine. And when I saw that, I thought that was like the coolest thing in the world. So apparently, uh, someone has done some uh, testing of the wine residue in the, the clay jars or urns or whatever that were a part of ancient Rome. And when they tested that, and then they, they compared it to grape varietals to find out what does it most closely resemble. And apparently, what it most closely resembles is Pieti Rosso. And Pieti Rosso, uh, again, red grape grown in Mount Vesuvius, uh, gets interesting, gets its name uh, from part of the vine. So part of the vine actually has this red uh, portion of it that kind of juts out. And it looks apparently like a pigeon's foot or a dove's foot. You know, if you think about it, have you ever seen the feet of a pigeon or a dove? You have like the, you know, the three claws and then, and then the leg and it's, it's reddish. And that's apparently where it gets its name from. Um, I will say, interestingly, I wasn't in love with this wine. Uh, when I taste wines from Italy and I really enjoy them, I, I, I feel like there's this wonderful dusty component to the red wines, and that's about the best way I know how to describe it. And then you get your interesting fruits and, and maybe tannin or whatnot. So when I've had some some really outstanding Barolos or some really wonderful Chiantis, um, you know, honestly, I feel like I'm drinking in the hills where these things were grown. I'm, I'm tasting some of the soil. I'm, I'm, I'm drinking in the dust or surrounding the grapevines that where these, these wines were grown. This one, not as much. Um, Got to enjoy it. Uh, it's a little bit of a, uh, it definitely uh, plays in, in some of the, the darker categories of, of some of the red wines only because of how deep and dark Alianico is, and that's 50% of the wine. Um, would I get it every day over uh, some of the Chiantis that I enjoy? Or there's a, a Tuscan um, by La Spinetta. There's a, uh, a Tuscan wine they make. Uh, it's outside of Chianti, but Tuscan region of San Giovese, I think it's really wonderful. Um, no, I, I don't know if I would, but I'm really happy to have tried something that has this really cool story and backstory behind it. And I also get to check off the box a grape variety that I've never had before. I mean, honestly, how many people can say, other than folks who travel to Italy extensively, but how many people who just go to their local wine shop have said, oh yes, I had that Pieti Rosso, and oh, I had that Greco de Tufo. Um, it's just kind of fun to try different things and be able to say, yep, I've had that. And whether you like it or not, uh, you know, as far as like it's your new favorite wine you're going to have every day and twice on Sunday, or it's just something kind of fun to do uh, every now and then. I think it's that, you know, that's what I like about wine. So anyway, I don't want to get in too much into the tasting notes, but more just about some of the history around the wine. And again, the theme of try something you haven't heard of and see if you like it. And that's what I did here, which was really fun to do. So that's the story. 
Um, so we've knocked out two more wines on our 50 glasses of wine to talk about. Um, you know, if you if you do see these in, in your local store, uh, now you know a little bit more about them. So you can say, hey, I heard about that Pieti Rosso or that Lacrima Christi. You know, oh, I didn't know that. Literally meant tears of Christ. So it's really fun to, to you know, give it a shot or bring it somewhere to a party and tell someone a little bit of that story. And now you've got a wine that's more of a conversation piece than just, I brought something we're going to, you know, open up and, and get a buzz from. So... In any event, I hope everyone out there is doing well, and I look forward to talking to you again soon as we keep going, uh, getting through our list of 50 glasses. So until next time, as always, cheers.